video is to teach you the banana macropropagation technology as a means to produce relatively clean banana plantlets in a period of two to four months. In this video, we're going to demonstrate to you advantages of macropropagation, healthy sucker selection, pairing to remove roots, boiling water treatment, peeling to expose buds, substrate sterilization, humidity chamber management, rooting and hardening. Advantages of macropropagation. Macropropagation gives relatively healthy plants if suckers are got from healthy mother plants and contamination is avoided during the process. Macropropagation can be done locally at low cost and with minimum training. A private person or farmer's organization can launch this activity. The produced plantlets are easily transportable and so easily marketable. How to select suckers? Healthy sowed suckers are carefully uprooted from healthy looking mother plants. Sowed suckers are suckers that are about one meter in length whose leaves are still shaped like a sword. They're recommended suckers to use for macro propagation. Pairing to remove roots. The sword suckers are then cleaned to remove soil and paired to remove outer tissue like roots, sheaths, and the topmost layer of the comb. In this way, nematodes, which mainly reside in roots, are removed at the same time, allowing visibility in case of any weevil tunnels on the comb tissue. After pairing, the suckers are then immersed in boiling water. Boiling water treatment. This is a process whereby the paired sucker is dipped in boiling water for 30 seconds. Farmers can estimate the 30 seconds by counting from 1 to 30 at a moderate speed. Alternatively, 30 seconds can be estimated by using a hand watch or stopwatch on phones. The aim is to have a healthy sucker that is free from nematodes and their eggs that may be on the surface of the comb. Please note, overheating kills the sucker. Peeling to expose buds. This is a process where the sheaths are continuously peeled off at the point of their connection to the comb. This helps to expose the buds which are always found where the sheath starts and ends. At this point, the sheath seems to make letter V. Each bud that is exposed is cross-cut in the center to allow sprouting of multiple shoots. After all the possible buds are exposed, the main growing point on the comb is then killed by cross-cutting in the middle or by simply removing growing soft tissue in the middle. Substrate sterilization. This is a process where sawdust, soil, or husks are steam heated to kill possible banana pests and disease causing agents. In this process, water is put in a container and a platform made on which the sawdust sits without making contact with water. After putting in the substrate, the container is then covered for steam retention. Fire is then applied to heat the water and steam the substrate. Lighter substrates, like sawdust, will take about two hours while soil will take about four hours in continuous heating. Humidity chamber management. The sterilized sawdust is then put in a humidity chamber. The chamber is made in a box structure to contain sawdust. This structure can be made of materials like timber, old iron sheets, or bricks, among others. On this box structure, a frame is raised about one meter high on which a transparent plastic sheet is put to ensure humid and transparent conditions. A simple propagation chamber can be two meters in length, one meter high and 1.5 meters wide. Other chamber designs of different sizes, however, exist depending on resources and capacity required but are all built on the same principle. 
This peeled corn is then planted in sterilized sawdust at a spacing of about 5 cm from each other. Please note, sawdust can be substituted with coffee or rice husks in areas where it is not available. After planting, carry out thorough watering because sawdust takes in a lot of water the first time. After this, watering can be done every three to five days depending on the climatic conditions to keep sawdust moist but not wet. After a period of about one month, plants begin to sprout. In some cases, only one plant may grow from the cross-cut bud. This plant should be cut at the point where the sheaths meet the comb. After cutting at the collar, then cross-cut in the center to promote secondary sprouting. Rooting and hardening. Where plants have attained three leaves, they can be detached and planted in a plastic bag that has sterilized soil with manure. When detaching the plantlets, remove sawdust to be able to see the comb of the plantlets in order to avoid damages. Cut the plantlet at the point of attachment to the mother comb and gently lift it up to pull out the roots from the sawdust. Plants with three roots and more may be planted in potting bags with sterilized soil mixed with manure at a ratio of one to one, while plants with two roots and less should be planted back in the sawdust in the chamber to allow growth of more roots before being potted. The potted plants can be put under a simple shade where they are frequently watered as needed. After a period of about one month, plants are ready for planting in the field. In a situation where more than one variety of banana is being propagated, care must be taken to see that all plants are labeled right from the field to the chamber and in the hardening shade to avoid variety mix-ups. In this video, we have seen healthy sucker selection, pairing, boiling water treatment, peeling to expose the cut buds, substrate sterilization, humidity chamber management, rooting and hardening.